Hey and welcome back to another video. So within the past two videos in this course, we actually looked at what a REST API is and also what JSON is as well. So why did we actually go through this? Well, it's really important to understand what both of these are since more than likely when you tackle a take home project, you have to interact with a service using either a REST API and JSON. Now in this video, we're going to see how we can actually test against an API and look at its data before writing a single line of code using Postman, as you can see on the screen here. So what is Postman? Well, Postman is actually a tool that allows developers to interact with API using a GUI. And you can actually check it out alongside a bunch of other tools that I show off in SwiftUI sessions within the top five iOS development tools videos. Now this video goes over Postman and other helpful iOS development tools that you can use to help speed up your workflow. Now you can either use Postman directly in the browser, as you can see here. So if you wanted to, you could actually sign in and just use it directly in the browser. Or alternatively, if you wanted to, you could actually download the application. Now, me personally, I prefer to have the Mac app on my machine. So I've already got this installed. You can just download it by selecting, you know, one of the options here. So let's actually go into Postman. So this is Postman, as you can see here. So why use Postman in the first place before actually even writing a single line of code? Well, the reason why you want to, you know, use Postman before you even like write any kind of networking code at all is because the worst thing that can happen to you is that if you write some code and then test out your networking code and you find out that the API isn't working or you thought it was actually a bug in your code, you've wasted a lot of time. So instead of actually, you know, going gun ho and actually, you know, writing the networking code, what you want to do is actually test out the API to see if it works and also just to see what the data looks like from the API as well. Now the API that we're going to be working with is the request API and we're going to look at you know how we can actually map some of the data that we get back from the service to our mock-up designs. So if we actually look at our mock-up designs here you'll notice that we have these different screens. So if you actually look at this now you'll see that we need to figure out what screens need an endpoint. So if you look at our people view we've got a list of users here so we're going to need an endpoint that allows us to actually get all the people or see if one exists. We also want to see if an endpoint exists where we can actually get specific information about that user and we also need an endpoint to see you know how we can actually create a user within our application now this setting screen isn't actually going to interact with any kind of service so this doesn't need an api so realistically what we need now is we need three endpoints that allow us to get the user on our home screen get information for our detail screen and also create a user by you know sending some data so let's actually look at the API that we're going to be working with and actually try to map this to see if these endpoints exist. So let's do that now. So this is the endpoint that we're going to be using called the request, I hope I'm saying that right, the request API. And this lets you basically just test an API using fake data. So you can just quickly, you know, prototype something up without having to build your own API. So if you actually scroll down, you'll notice that you actually have a list of all the things that you can actually do in this API. So we said before that we needed a endpoint to help us get a list of users. And if you actually look on the screen here, the first thing you'll notice is that you're actually able to get a list of users as well as paginate them as well. So if you don't know what paginate means, it just basically means that you can just go through different pages. Like, you know, when you're on a web page and you have page one, two, three, four, you can access the users based on their page. So you don't get a crazy response back from the service. Now for this example, and um, what we're just going to do is handle getting a list of the users without the pagination. But in a future video within this course, we will look at how we can actually handle this nicely in Swift UI and using Swift Concurrency. So we've got our first endpoint here for getting our list of users. Now the next thing we wanted to do was actually get a you know information about a single user. And if you actually look on the next one down, you'll see here we have single user. So we can use this to get our single user information. So now we've got our two endpoints that we needed. So the final one that we needed was so we can actually create a user. And if you actually look, you'll see here, that there's actually a post request where we can actually create a user as well. So we can actually send the information about that person. And then what we can do is get a response back telling us that everything was okay. Okay, cool. So now we've got our three endpoints that we're going to interact with. So we've got our two get requests and we've got our single post request. So what we want to do now is we actually want to look at how we can actually, you know, use this within Postman. So let's actually see how we can test it out just so we can see it working. So if you go into Postman for the first time, you'll notice that it looks like this. 
Now, what you're able to do is actually create a new request. Now you can do that by simply just hitting the plus button here. And by hitting the plus button, you'll now get this outline where you can now fill it out and start to build up your request. Now, looking at our documentation, the request that we want to implement here is the first one is the list of users. So we just want to get a list of users and actually just see, you know, how it'll work. So first we want to do is by default, it's set to get. So we want to make sure it's a get request. And now what we need to do in here is we actually need to type in the base URL and the endpoint. Now you can easily find this by just going back to the documentation. And if you actually just click on this request here and open it in a new tab, you'll see that it actually executes the request and actually prints and essentially just dumps out the data on the screen. Now the base URL in our case is going to be this bit here, which is the request in. So we want to actually copy this bit as the base URL. So let's just copy this and then let's just paste it in here. Cool. So now if you want to actually send this and see what happens, you'll see that you actually get an error. And the reason why you get an error is because you're just calling the base URL. You've not actually told it what resource you want to access by using an endpoint. So let's go back into our example from before. And then this time what we want to do is we actually want to use the endpoint part of this URL here. So the API users, so let's just copy this. And then let's just paste this on the end here. And then now let's actually hit send. Now, as you can see in the bottom part, after we get a successful request, you can now see that we've got our data in JSON here on the screen. So what we're actually able to do now is actually preview what this data looks like. As you can see, looking at the JSON response here, we actually get a object and within that object nested down, we actually get this here, data. So within data, this is where we have our array of users. So this is how we're going to access our users. So you can see that we have all the information that we're going to use on the screen as well to build up our user dynamically within our application. So now that we saw this for a users, what about if we want to actually make a call to get a specific user? So like this user here with an ID of one. Well, if you go back to the documentation again, so let's just close this tab. You'll notice that you have the endpoint users, but this time you actually specify the ID at the end of it. So what we want to do is create a new request where we actually specify users, but at the end of it, we want to put the ID as well. So let's go back into Postman and then let's actually duplicate this tab. So we can actually right click on this and hit duplicate rather than having to fill it all out all over again. And this time we'll put slash and then we'll actually try to get this user here, George Bluth. So we actually want to put the ID of one in here. So after here, we want to put in one. So now what we're able to do is hit send. And as you can see, after you hit send, you now get back your response from the API. So now we're able to see that this these two endpoints, in terms of fetching a list of users and getting a user specifically by their ID, works fine. So we've still got one more to test out, but this time it's a bit different. It's not a GET request, it's actually a POST request. So let's actually do this from scratch. Well, let's create a new request here by hitting the plus button. And then this time we don't want GET, we actually want to change this to POST. So if you click on it, you'll see here that you have POST. Cool, so now we have a POST request. So you can see that it's actually labeled differently compared to the GET request with the color and uh, naming as well. So in here, what we want to do this time is we actually want to fill in the endpoint. So let's actually go back to the API documentation. If you scroll down, you'll see here when you go to create, it's actually using the same endpoint. So it's actually using the API slash users. So let's go into our request here and I'm just going to copy that from here because it's the same base URL and endpoint. So now, if you actually looked at our documentation, you would have realized that you're actually able to send some data with your request. Now, if you actually look in Postman, there's a way to do that. And what you can actually do when you're sending requests, like a post request, or even a get request, if you need to send some kind of data, you can actually set these parameters via these tabs here. So if you want to send some headers, you can actually set a custom header here with a key and a value. Or if you want to send some kind of data in the body, you can do that here. Now what we want to do is we actually want to send some data with our request. So we actually want to use this body tab here and we actually want to set the option to here to be raw. 
And when you go to raw, this allows you to send some text, but what we want to do is actually send some JSON like so. So what this is going to do is it's actually going to send some JSON when with the API request. So let's actually just look at the documentation. I can see that someone sent a name and a job to the API. So let's just copy that. So we just go in here and we just type out some JSON. So we're going to say our name here is going to be tonsdev. And then we're going to say our job is iOS developer. Like so. Okay, cool. So now we have our JSON body that we're going to send in our request. So let's actually hit send and see what happens. Cool. So as you can see, when you hit send, this time we actually get a response back showing us the information that we sent. And we also get a 201 telling us that it was created. So you can see it's telling us our new resource has been created. So our API request was fine. So as you can see, when you want to actually send a post request, um, you know, rather than a get request, it's actually quite simple and easy to do in Postman. Now we've got all our API set up here, as you can see. But what we actually want to do now is actually organize them because the last thing we want to do is we don't want to have to like type this out all over again and you don't have to repeat this whole process for these three endpoints. Instead, what we want to do if we want to test our API is just simply go into Postman, click on the request and then hit send. So it just helps speed up our development workflow and helps us quickly and easily validate that our API is fine. So in order to do that, what we can do is actually create something called a collection. So you can see here that essentially a collection is just a folder that allows you to save requests and organize them. So let's do that now. So let's create a new collection. And you can do that by clicking that button or by hitting the plus button on the collection here to create a new collection. And we're just going to name this collection our request. API. Cool. So now what we're able to do is actually save our network request that we have here into this collection folder. So let's start doing that now. So let's go into our get request and then on the screen, you should see an option here called save. So let's hit the save button and then we want to choose to save it to the request API. Now you want to give this a proper name so you can easily distinguish the purpose of it because I don't know if you realize this, but the get request and the post request both have the same base URL and endpoint. So just for a quick glance, you might not quickly realize the difference between the two. Let's actually give it a realistic name called list all users. And if you wanted to, you could actually add a description where you go into more detail as well. But for now, I'm just going to leave this empty. So let's hit save. And now you'll see that we have our request saved in this folder. So let's do the rest for the other two. So let's go into here, save. And then we'll call this single user. So now we have our next request in our request API called single user. And then let's do the same for this, what we'll call create user. So hit save. And create. So now, if I was to close all of these tabs now, when I actually open up Postman, I now have this collection called Request API, and all I need to do is just simply click on it, and then hit Send, and I've got my APIs all saved within Postman to help me quickly and easily prototype. So that's everything in this video. I hope you found it useful in terms of seeing how you can use Postman to help speed up and also test up your workflow when working with APIs. If you enjoyed this video and if you like Postman or have any other cool tips and tricks that you want to share, I'd love to hear them in the comment section below. So if you enjoyed this video as well, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hit notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.